Welcome to the third video in our quadcopter building for beginners series. Now this series is designed for those of you that have never built one of these before. And one of the reasons that we're actually putting this video series together is because we're starting to get lots of people who are starting to build quadcopters as part of their projects at high school and in college and university as well. So this is designed for those individuals who are maybe a little bit less experienced with engineering and haven't come across some of these terms. So we are going to spend a bit more time in these videos than we normally do explaining how each of the pieces work. Now we have got a video series already that's called Introduction to Remote Control that has lots of additional videos that go into far more detail about each of the individual topics. So if you're watching this and you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, then please go and have a look at that playlist because there should be more information that will help you get your head around what we're talking about. But the aim of these videos is to slowly step you through each of the pieces of putting a quadcopter together so at the end of it you should at least be able to take it off without disaster happening. Now, as we talked about in the very first video, what I'd recommend here is that as you're following this series along that you get yourself something like this, which is a little Hubsan X4 quadcopter. These are great to learn to fly with. They are pretty bulletproof. They bounce. They're very inexpensive to repair. And when they hit things, they don't make a mess. I always recommend if you're going to try and learn to fly, learn with one of these. And then when you fly your quadcopter for the first time, it won't last three or four seconds before you destroy all your hard work. In the second video, we looked at the kit itself, the components, what they were like, and also talked about some due diligence pieces as well. Now we're confident that we've got everything that we need on the kit, then we're going to continue building it. Now, of course, there were a couple of things, if you remember, that didn't come with the kit. It didn't come with a LiPo battery, so there's no way to power the model, but we'll look at that when we get to power systems later. It also hasn't come with a radio, and we will look at that in a separate video, and also connecting that up too. This video is going to be concerned completely with the flight controller. Now the flight controller that's come as part of this kit we're using is a Seriously Pro F3 copy. We have a complete other series for the Seriously Pro F3 board. It was one of the first F3 boards that came out of a designer called Dominic Clifton, who is in charge of something called Clean Flight. Now, Clean Flight is something we're going to talk about throughout this series, and it's the software that runs on this board, because this board is the brain of the quadcopter and it's the piece that does all of the hard work and the operating system is clean flight. So if you think of the analogy being a PC, the hardware, the physical box and the screen and the keyboard and mouse is, is kind of the board. That's the hardware piece. That's the flight controller. The operating system, which on the PC could be Windows, it could be Android, it might be iOS. It's clean flight on a flight controller. And again, there are lots of different flight controllers out there and they all have their own particular version of operating system. And just like PCs and computers, you can also get different flavors of the operating system as well. So as well as clean flight, there's one called base flight, there's one called beta flight, there's one uh, version of it called iNav, which is all about GPS. So there's lots of people out there who like to use different flavors of it, and that's because people are developing this software and these operating systems for these flight controllers around specific things that they're interested in. For this series, though, we're going to use vanilla clean flight. But before we get into looking at the board a little bit more, let's take a step back, as this series is for those of you that are a little bit newer to setting up quadcopters, and just take a sec to look at what the flight controller or brain that's in the middle of your quadcopter actually does. So here's our little flight controller. It's not exactly the one we're using here. It's a different version, but all the flight controllers are doing the same basic stuff. Now, the first thing we'll do is obviously we'll have to plug it in to some kind of radio receiver. Now, the radio receiver usually connects with a single three wire cable or with multiple three wire cables. And don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later in the series in more detail. But that's how the flight controller knows what you as the pilot want the quadcopter to do. Of course, the other end of the radio receiver has an antenna on it, and that antenna is listening to the commands that you're sending from the radio control that you have in your hands at the side of the field. So that's the very first thing that the flight controller is doing, is it's hearing and understanding and interpreting the commands that you're sending across. How much power you want to the motors, whether you want it to go forwards, backwards, left, right, up, down, turn around, left or right, whichever way you want to fly. 
The next thing the flight controller is doing, which is sometimes less obvious, is it's also listening to another set of inputs as well. And those are coming back from the sensors. And these are typically actually on the flight controller itself. So as well as the memory and the processor that's on this little computer, there's also things on here called gyroscopes. Now gyroscopes sense rotational movement and there's also things on here called accelerometers. And accelerometers are things like in smartphones, they sense lateral movement of side to side movement. And each of these setups has the ability to sense movement in all three axes. So the accelerometers will detect movement side to side, front to back, and also up and down. And the flight controller is listening to that all the time and also using that with the signals from the radio to decide how it needs to adjust the speed of the motors. And that's the third thing it does. Using the data, it then interprets that and decides how much the motors need to change in terms of their speed. Because we don't have any control surfaces, so there's no wings on a quadcopter, all of the movement is done by changing the speed of the motors. So if we want the quadcopter to go to the left, then the two motors on the right-hand side have to speed up so that the quadcopter tilts over and then moves to the left. Similarly, if we want it to rotate, because not all of the motors are turning in the same direction, the quadcopter will maybe increase the two motors that have counter-rotation to the way you want to move the craft and decrease the power on the other two so it doesn't rise in the air, and that will then gyroscopically turn the craft around. There's an awful lot going on there, and the flight controller is doing all that hundreds of times a second while you're flying. And the last thing it's doing, of course, then is checking that the movement that it's asked the motors for, based on what you've asked the flight controller to do and what you've asked the model to do, and also what it can feel via the sensors, is actually happening. And if it is, then it changes it. Now, at the heart of all this, we're not going to get into the detail, but there are things called PID loops. And these are little loops inside the flight controller's software. And what those loops do is they are deciding on how all of those pieces fit together and how aggressively it's making the changes and how it works to fly the model. Now, all flight controllers have their own kind of characteristics, but this is what the basic flight controller is doing. On top of this, flight controllers can do loads of other things because this is the very basic level. And as we go through some of this, I'll, when I talk about clean flight, I'll show you some of the extra features and functions that you can do in there. But this is what the flight controller is all about. So if we go back to the desk, you'll notice here that the flight controller that we've got has come with a little case, but none of the pins are attached. Now, I would always recommend when we're building a model, the very first thing you do is you connect it up to the computer with the software installed, and you make sure that you can connect to it, and it boots up, and you can save settings and flash new firmware onto it, which is that operating system we talked about, and that it's all okay before you do anything with it. The reason for that is occasionally you will get a dud flight controller. It's uh, much rarer these days, but it does happen. It's much easier to return a flight controller if you haven't done all the soldering on it. So let's make sure it's working first of all, and then once it's working, we can solder everything on. So now we've talked about that, let's talk about the software we need on the computer before we plug the flight controller in using this little USB connector at the side. Before we plug the flight controller into the computer, let's put the software on. Now we're going to be using Clean Flight. So we'll go through the process here and talk you through that. It's pretty straightforward. For some of the other flight controllers, things like CC3Ds, you'll probably have to install something like LibrePilot. But again, if you look on the channel, if you're using a slightly different flight controller, there are instructions about how you go around setting each of them up. But I'll show you how this is going to work with this SP Racing F3. To load Clean Flight is pretty straightforward. We're just going to go into Google and we'll search for Clean Flight. And the top one it's going to come up with is Clean Flight Configurator in the Chrome Web Store. That's the one that we're after. Now, we have already got it installed, so I click on Launch app to launch it, and then we're ready to go. However, if this is the first time you've looked at this and it's on your computer, and again, you have to be in Google Chrome for this to work because it's going to install as an app as part of the Google Chrome browser. Uh, so make sure you're looking at this. If you try and look at this at something like the Edge or Internet Explorer or another browser, then it isn't going to work. 
up here will say install. You click and install and install it. And then once you've got it installed like we have here, you can click on launch app. Now it will run offline. So it's installed locally on the machine. It does need an internet connection, but you will need to have an internet connection the first time you connect to the board because you probably find that the board is out of date with the firmware that's come supplied on it. So once you've got to here, you just click on launch app and it will start. Now, the other thing I'll mention while we're at this point, I'll just click on the other tab. You'll usually find that there is some kind of manual for the flight controller that you're looking at. Now, this is the manual for the original version of the board we have, and they are usually written like this. They're amazingly complicated and read like washing machine instructions written in a foreign language. There are only really a couple of things that we're going to be interested in on here, and we're going to cover them in their own individual videos in this series. The first is where you connect all the ESCs, and that on the board is down here. We'll look at that in a second when we plug the board in. It's usually a row of pins, usually between six to eight of them, and there's three in each row, and that is for the ground and the positive plus five volts, and then the S stands for signal. But don't worry about that, we'll cover that later in the series. The only other thing that we're gonna really worry about is where we connect our radio receiver, and that's actually on one of these ports over here. So again, if you're looking at the manuals, don't worry, some of them are amazingly complicated, which is why we make these videos, but we'll go through each of those pieces, but it's handy to have these around in case you're not sure of how everything works, because what you tend to find is once you've got your model flying, then you want to start doing things like add FPV, which we'll do in the one of the last videos in the series, and then you also want to do things like add telemetry, and then you want to put LEDs that will flash and change colour as you fly, and all those kind of funky things that you'll see in the other series on the channel, but for now we're just going to concern ourselves with those two. So let's launch Clean Flight Configurator and show you what it looks like, there it is. So when we're going to connect to the board, we're gonna come back here in a second and we're gonna click on connect and then all of this stuff will be populated and we can start to see it's gonna work. So let's just jump back to the desk very quickly, plug the board in and then we'll come back here, make sure that all these settings are right because these are the only things we can really change and then we'll click on connect. So on the flight controller itself, there's that one that we just saw in the manual. And again, these are all the pins here where we're gonna connect the ESCs to that will eventually run the motors. So this is kind of the output of the board if you want to think of it like that. And then this little connector on the side is gonna be the one that we're going to use to connect to our radio receiver. But we'll do that later in the series. For now, all we're gonna do is plug it in. So we've got clean flight running on our PC. We have the settings ready. So we've just gone with manual selection. We've gone with 115200. Uh, we have our little USB port ready. So let's plug the USB port in and you should hear the computer say it can see it. There we are, we have a couple of lights flashing away. It should automatically install the drivers the very first time. Some flight controllers need extra little bits of effort to make them all work. If they do, then what I'd say is go and have a look in the series for the board that you're using. We normally talk through the little ways to get it all working if you're not using something that's going to run clean flight. Things like the NASI 32, the Sirius Liplo F3s, things like that just tend to find the drivers and it all works automatically. So we're going to click connect, and there we are, we are actually looking at our flight controller, and I can prove that by if I move the board around, tilt it left and right, there's the board moving, and you can see, there we go, if I put it the same way around, isn't that cool, like magic. So that is the front of the board, and this is a slightly weird thing. Each board is laid out differently, so we're gonna to have to remember that when we put this together. And it's got a default configuration on here. If we look on the computer, you can see that it is using uh, version 1.10 of Clean Flight, which is particularly old. The stuff here on the top means that we have uh, the gyroscopes that we talked about in the flight controller, the ones that sense uh, the rotational movement, movement like that the gyroscopes can see. We've got the accelerometers and they can feel kind of side to side movement. Um, then we have the magnetometer, which we'll need to calibrate and the barometer as well. Now, I'd always recommend at this point, just to make sure the board is happy, lay it completely flat, 
click on calibrate accelerometers and then what you should find is the little graphic at the bottom goes completely flat and you can see at the top it says calibration finished so now when the board's flat the little graphic is two that's really good and I'd also do things like calibrate the magnetometer and when you click on that you have to flip the board around in 360 degrees in all orientations and then put it down and it'll stop flashing uh, both of those are kind of handy to make sure that everything's working and it looks really good now the next thing we'll look at then is uh, the configuration we can see here that by default it's set for a quadcopter which is brilliant so what I would say here is make a note of where each of the motors are and which way they're turning. We're going to use this graphic when we start to actually attach the motors to the frame and when we also then start to wire everything up. So this is a really important thing. This is also where you can change how it's going to work and where all the connections are. So although we're building a, a quadcopter, these flight controllers can be used for all kinds of wacky craft. So I would say let's just keep it quad X. Everything looks perfect. So we can see what sensors it's got. We can see that it's set up for a quad X. And again, make a note of that image. We're going to use that three or four times before we're finished in this series. Jumping back to setup, we can see everything moving fine too. Great, okay, we know the flight control is ready. Last thing we need to do, of course, is we're going to have to solder the pins into each of these positions. Now the pins actually come as part of the kit and this is where you're going to need your soldering iron and a steady hand. You push the pins through and you apply a little bit of solder at the back. Now some kits come with flight controllers that do already have the pin soldered on. So if soldering is something that makes your blood run cold, then get a kit that already has all the pins on that will make your life an awful lot easier. So I'm going to do that and then when we come back in the next video, what we'll do is we'll start building the frame because now we know that that's the front of the flight controller. So we know it's gonna to have to go that way around if this is the front of the model. We also now know where each of those motors are. Remember we had that little layout of the quadcopter we can start putting the thing together so join me in the next video because now we know the flight controller appears happy and it's going to work and what we can do is we can start putting the frame together and thinking about how we're going to lay out all the components so join me in the next video where we'll do that Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.